Chair, and good morning, Emer and Owen, and thank you for your presentation. And I also want to commend the work of the Shared Island Unit. I think you do a wide range of very important work across a, a very broad uh, range of areas. Um, and I want to particularly welcome the investment in the A5 North uh, West Transport Corridor, because a small part of that is in my constituency of Cabin Monaghan, um, as the end to contribute to the border part. And I just said that that's mm. so important, because mm. not only will that bring uh, benefits to the area, it will just save so many lives, because it's such a dangerous road. And the other scheme is the Ulster Canal restoration. Mm. I see the work ongoing there every time I go through Clonus, and again, that's, that's really welcome, and I hope that's something that will continue as well. Um, I suppose I was really, I mean, really interested in the educational attainment, and I know you answered questions to Senator Curry, and I think that's a really important work. Um, but also the supports for disabled, uh, or sorry, for female uh, entrepreneurs. And I just want to bring in if, um, something on disabled entrepreneurs, because that's something we hear a lot here, is that the supports for disabled people to set up their own business are are not there, they're not sufficient, they don't meet the, 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 the needs of disabled people. I'm just wondering, could it be expanded as well to look at um, not just female entrepreneurship, which is really important and I'd like to hear more about, but also maybe looking at disabled people as well, because it's something that would be really beneficial. Um, I just um, when you're talking about um, work in relation to climate change um, and energy security, the laws in the north and the south differ in relation to, say, fuel and smoky, smoky fuel and smokeless fuel. And the south, we have more strict laws around what fuel can be burned. And when you live in a border county, what happens is smoky fuel is sold much cheaper just north of the border. So you have people going and buying their fuel there and it's not monitored. And it's, it's something that those selling fuel south of the border are very concerned about because they actually obey the law, pay their carbon tax and sell the smokeless fuel, but it's much more expensive. And it's just an issue because it's still affecting our climate change. So I just want to, could it be anything done around um, harmonising our laws, north and south, in relation to uh, fuel and the type of fuel and the damage it's doing to our environment? Because um, you can't blame people, they'll go, especially in the cost of living crisis, they will buy what's, what's cheaper. And we actually have people who buy in bulk and sell um, illegally around the area, and not just in the border counties, but quite far down the south. So it's an issue I've raised with the Minister for the Environment, but there's no enforcement there. The, the, the local authorities are, are supposed to enforce this, but they're not given the resources to do so. They have so officers, I think. In they do, but... Yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah, it's not I've happening. I've raised this issue myself. Yeah. And the other problem is that you can deliver coal uh, from the from northern base to places in the south cheaper than you can commercially purchase that for sale in the south. Like the even, you could so order online, issue. Yeah. order through. That's yeah. a health issue. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. So, but just want to commend all the work. And the, like, you do so much important uh, research, and it's great to know that it's actually informing ministers then that yeah. in their work going forward, because you would, wouldn't like to see research being done for the sake of it and really good you know, just sitting on a shelf somewhere. So I really welcome the fact that it's informing um, policy going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy. Yeah, I mean, obviously the A5 has, is a flagship project. It's, it's, it's um, everyone has waited a very long time and I know there was another tragedy on, on it this week. And uh, so it's not just, it is a cross-border um, uh, infrastructure project, but it's also uh, around uh, road safety. Um, and so we're hopeful that that can actually commence this year. And, and for that reason, the government decided that now was the time to be clear about the supports that this government can provide to that really important project, in, as you said, and the link projects around the Clontibret to the border and on the far side, the, 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 the Donegal T10. On the Ulster Canal, um, the, set, the phase two is just coming, is about to be complete, which is great. So we should see that, um, I think, in about April or May, that that should be absolutely finished. And phase three, at the same time, all the, all the kind of preparation for that is underway. Brilliant. So it's going to happen in a couple of, of different pieces. But again, from a shared island unit perspective, that funding commitment to 47 million to see it through um, it, uh, stands and will be programmed in as Waterways Ireland developed the project itself. Um, on the entrepreneurship programme, um, again, so on this, this is, this is an area that the three enterprise agencies have um, identified as a priority that they all share. Um, very happy to bring to their attention what you've said to us today and ask them to consider um, around disabled entrepreneurs also and whether they can look at, at, at agreeing that as, as a priority focus for them as well. And then on, on the fuel issue, um, 
which you know is, is a, like there's a number of issues, whether it's, it's revenue or health or, or, or the environment. Um, it might be an issue, for instance, that might be best uh, raised in the context of the North South Ministerial Council, um, because ultimately I think that's the level that the, the dialogue would have to take place around coordinating how it's it, you know when you have different um, standards and rules applying in the two jurisdictions.